Defensive Knife Fighting Series 2. Through this episode, we will be utilizing our weapon in a reverse grip. So in a reverse grip, you have to hold on to the blade in this manner here, as to the regular straight grip. So if you have your reverse grip, and you should have the, the ability to, to change your hand around, go into a re reverse grip or come into a forward grip. So you should be able to utilize your weapon and be able to maneuver it. And it's not like you're gonna do it in a combat, but you do have to be able to turn the blade, drop it down into a reverse grip where then you can continue fighting. There's some things that you have to be aware of. And as we discussed in the first episode, if you didn't have the first episode, we'll have to discuss some terminology. The terminology is working to the inside or the outside of our attacker. When I speak of working to the inside or moving to the inside, it would be as if your attacker was attacking from his right side and having his left side on this side of you, moving to the inside of them would be moving towards his open arm, not the arm that's attacking. If I said to move to the outside of your attacker, that would be moving to behind your attacker. It would be moving to the outside of the attacking arm. So we will be using this terminology throughout the series. Getting back to it, if you have your reverse grip, and you might want to practice this, that you do have the weapon, and you have to have the weapon both feel comfortable in, in both ways, but here we're specializing in the reverse grip, so it's a matter of turning the blade over and dropping it down. So it's a matter of turning the blade over and dropping it down into the reverse grip. The reverse grip can be utilized for both stabbing and you can stab in any direction, just like on series one. Or you can slash in every direction. If you're slashing down or slashing up or slashing diagonally from any direction, that it's just a matter of once you come down, you have to know which way to turn the wrist to come up. Being able to slash in one position, then go to point, or being able to point and then switch to a slash is essential in your skill and development here. So again, you have to learn to feel comfortable with your knife, and it's good to have a real knife because if you're not used to the weight of a real knife, there's differences. And again, like in the first series that we did, you might not have a big Bowie knife like, like I have, you might have a pocket knife. And a pocket knife is very beneficial too. So if you open up the pocket knife, again, you can open up from a straight grip, or if you had that in, the difference being, the blade is facing inwards when it's hooked into my pockets. When I take the pocket out and the blade is still facing inwards, I just turn it into my wrist and I'd open it up in this manner. Now, if this knife, having the blade out here, goes in this pocket, the blade is actually facing outwards. If the blade is facing outwards, when you take the blade out of your pocket and you turn it in this position, you will be releasing the blade in a reverse grip. So it's good, and you can hold or reverse the blade anytime you want. Like, if it's just a matter of getting the feel of, of the weapon and knowing what you're doing. So if you wanted to um, have, the, if, you, if, if you happen to take out the blade holding on in this manner, you would release it in a reverse grip. If you, uh, from a straight manner, you can release it from the spur. There's different ways that you can do this. Again, it's really important to choose a weapon that you could feel comfortable with utilizing or holding and it could have uh, everyday uses. Um, this weapon is not too big. It can be used as a striking weapon as well. Uh, it's nice enough, it even has a bob opener. Uh, or you can put a carabiner on it and hold it, it's, it's okay. And I'm not marketing or selling any weapons because there's a lot of weapons with different advantages. In this situation, this is just a fairly inexpensive buck knife which you could buy um, at any Walmart if you wanted to. It's reasonable, 
with the clip. You can clip it onto your belt. You can clip it inside of your pocket. You can clip it on the outside of your pocket, depending on what you feel more comfortable with or where you are. And you might not want people to be seeing a knife hanging off your pocket. You could then again <clears throat> put it onto a strap. You could clip that into a purse strap. You can clip it inside of your purse. You can clip it anywhere. As long as you can clip it somewhere where you can feel comfortable with getting it if you do need to get the weapon. Again, if you go to the reverse grip, you should be able to feel com comfortable at, at coming from any angle. So whether I'm stabbing in any direction that I want to or if I'm slicing in any direction that I want to. So as long as I can stab to slice or slice to stab, it, it all has to work in together and you should feel comfortable in moving in any direction uh, in your defense. We will be discussing, again, going into the foot motion, that if you're moving to the inside of somebody or moving to the outside, depends on the person's attack. So if he was attacking with his left hand and his right hand was on this side, if I moved in this manner to defend or to attack, offend, I'm moving to his inside. If I moved out in this manner behind him, I would be moving to his outside. Let's get back to the first technique of the series. Offensive technique number one, defending against an attacker who's holding on to the blade with a reverse grip. And remember, the reverse grip always has the cutting edge of the blade away from you, not inside of you. So make sure, sure this is a good thing for you to know, and I might not have talked about it sooner, because I think everybody knows these things, but you know, everybody doesn't. Make sure that if you have your blade and you're holding on to a reverse grip, that the blade from a reverse grip, the sharp part of the blade is away from your body. Uh, which is an, another way for you to hide your weapon. It might be hidden that way. Somebody might not know that you even have a weapon. So there is some pros and cons to holding on with a reverse grip. Like everything else, there's pros and cons to holding on with a straight grip. If you have the weapon in the straight grip, there are certain things that you can do and certain things that you can't do. You have to have the ability and the development to be able to hold your weapon in any grip and be able to fight. And know that when I hold it into this grip, the blades are facing away from me, not into me. So they're facing out. So in getting back to it, let's begin with your first technique. In this segment, we'll, we will be uh, defending against somebody who's attacking with the reverse grip of the knife, while we still have the straight grip of the knife. Our number one offensive technique is as your opponent comes to attack you on a downward strike, move to the side, avoiding the possibility of him striking you. So what you're doing here is using a directional movement and circling at the same time, intercepting his blade. So as he comes to strike you, you're moving to the side, sticking with and redirecting his blade as you're thrusting the point of your blade into his throat. Again, as your opponent is coming on a downward strike to stab you, move to the outside. And you're not blocking, you're not grabbing, you're sort of going with his energy, deploying with his downward motion, which gives you a chance to get a grip of his weapon and redirect it into his inner thigh. At the same time, you will be striking him in the throat. So it won't be like one, two, it'll be one motion, but for demonstration purposes, I've broken it down. So as he comes to stab you, you're moving to the side, thrusting his blade into himself and your blade into his throat. A close-up of the technique is as your opponent is coming to strike you, move to the side, redirecting his energy and thrusting your blade into his throat at the same time. On the other side, so you're changing hands, now you're holding on to the blade with your left hand, and he's also holding on with his left hand. As he comes with his reverse grip, striking down at you, like in the Psycho movie, you're going to move to the side, to the outside of him, using a directional movement line on a 40, forward 45 angle. So as he comes, 
And as his arm passes by you, it's the same time that you come to strike him. So make sure that when his arm is, isn't coming by, that you're not intercepting and putting your own arm in his way. So make sure that when he comes, you're moving aside, letting his blade pass him, and as it's stress, striking him, your blade is also striking into him. From a closer perspective, as your opponent is coming to strike you, move outside. At the same time, it's not a, a grab or an abrasive technique. It's sort of, you're just sticking with his energy and redirecting it. Make sure you do this correctly because there's, there's a lot of intricacies here and how you grab him or block him is going to change his energy and of how his body is going to react. So if you become part of his natural flowing energy and just redirect it, it will work a lot smoothly for you. So as he is coming again, you're stepping outside, redirecting his blade to his lower region and stabbing him into the neck. Our second offensive technique from uh, an attacker who's attacking with a reverse grip while we're holding on with a straight grip. This time we'll be uh, defending in line, which means as the same arm that he has out aligns with my side. So he has his right arm, I have my left arm. Again, why we do these things uh, with different grips and different angles is because when somebody is attacking you, they're not always attacking you the same and you have to be able to have some tricks to suit any situation. So here again, your opponent is coming uh, on an upward slice and as he's coming upwards, you're moving to the outside sticking with your blade, slicing that up his arm, redirecting it into the position to have a key lock. Make sure that you keep your blade here because if you do not keep this blade here, it gives him the mo momentum to come back around. So make sure you keep your blade here. At this time, you then will take your opponent down from here. As you slice him in the neck, you take your arm, applying a arm bar across your leg so that he cannot, he cannot continue the blade coming towards you as you continue stabbing your opponent in the neck or carotid artery. I'm also holding on in position using a pressure point which allows me then to turn my opponent over if I do want, want to do so. If I want to stab him with his own blade I can then do that as well. Again a bit closer as your opponent is coming to slice you, move to the outside, sticking with his energy, redirecting him into this key lock. If you do want to slice him, you can slice him, but if you do, if you give up control of this, this wrist, it allows him a, a slight movement to, to work against you. Unless you had him in this position, but then you can't control the wrist if he then, then goes to sli slice out this way. So make sure that you do Keep your blade in front of his blade. Take him down in this position again, coming to stab him, checking his arm and controlling it so that the blade cannot come to get you. And if he's then coming to kick you, you can guard with your blade. If he's not coming to kick you, then you can then come to strike him. I'm striking him this way so that I can still block with my elbow if his feet did come up. Because if I came up this way, then I wouldn't have a defense for that kick. So everything you do has to have a reason. Every technique that we do has a reason why we do it to defend ourselves or to preempt anything that our opponent can do. From the other side, again, as your opponent comes to slice you, make sure that you move out of the way. Number one, in every knife technique that we're doing, we want to move out of the way. We do not want to be in the place that that blade is coming to strike. I can't overstress how important it is to move your body out of the way. So as he's coming, move out of the way, sticking with his energy, slicing, shaving up his arm to this position where you can then perform a key lock. Now, you can't grab because you're not going to be in a position 
you put your arm over top, you can grab this way, but I still can't grab, but it's a hooking technique, allowing me to guard. I also got to make sure that this elbow moves upwards because if this elbow drops this way, it allows him to come around the back of me and then continue to try to stab me, which I prefer not to do. So if you understand his body movement by me picking up this elbow, you can see this shoulder retract in this angle. Having that position allows me then to take him down. I want to stab him. I'm going to first slice across his wrist because if I stab him this way, I'm going to be in front. He can, he can do a scissor lock with his blade on my wrist to try to control me. So I do not do that. What I do is I slice this way. I know from this grip I'm not strong enough to stop his arm from going this way. So I'm going to redirect it this way, collecting his elbow on the back of my knee, applying an arm bar on him. At the same situation, I'm stabbing him. Once you put your blade into somebody at this point, and don't bend over like this, always bend over bending your knees. In this position, once your blade is inside of him, he can't twist or turn because any direction that he moves, he'll be tearing the blade out in a different angle. Again, from a closer view, as your opponent comes to get you, step out of the way, redirecting it in this position here. You can walk him through this way as long as you pick up the elbow. Or you can step back with this leg in this position, another variation that you can do to take him down. But make sure that his arm is going to be strong this way, let it back, bounce around. Make sure that you hold on to this. You can see his body jumping up because he's trying to pre prevent his elbow from breaking. But he can't jump up if you have your blade into his neck. This is going to give you in a position. If you can then have total control from what you want to do at this point in time. Offensive technique number three, your attacker holding on to a reverse technique is slicing across you in this manner. Your defensive technique or offensive technique at this point will be as he comes, since you can't get around the outside because, because the blade is here, it'd be a wrong place to go. You have to come in this, this position and what you're trying to guard is because people have a lot of power and you guard it hard and you guard it with your blade and hand at the same time. In this position, you don't want to be hit with his other arm. So you step outside of him in this position here. Now you could just stab him, but people who train in martial arts, especially under me, will spin around and hit you with that elbow. Now what we do to prevent that is once we turn to this position, we point our blade into his left kidney which will prevent him from coming around with that elbow. And now, at this point, we'll just slash the back of the tendons of this arm and stab him in his other kidney, which will finish him off. Even at this point, I could use my blade to take him down, and drag him away, and then stop him from being able to roll towards me, again with my blade in his kidney. Again, with a closer view of the technique, your opponent is coming to slice you, you're stepping around, you're pivoting with your right rear leg in this manner, turning your body towards him, putting your hand flat against his hand with your thumb resting underneath his wrist so then you can get a grip over top of his wrist. Because y'all, you never want to be in this position because he has too much movement on his wrist. If you're in this position, you can stop that movement of his wrist. Again. Looking at this technique is he's coming to get you, you're intercepting, pivoting, you don't stop to get punched in the face, you come through in this position going right to his left kidney. Once you're at the left kidney which stops him or preempts him from being able to spin around and if you do not do this, let's say a technique would be for him to spin around all the way around and put his arms over top of under my arm and try to control me in this position, which I really would prefer not to be in. From the other side, now you will be holding on to the blade with your left hand, and your opponent will also have the blade with his left hand. 
he's coming in with a slice in this position there. And as he's coming in for that slice, you are pivoting using your foot to pivot into this position. You don't stop here to get hit in the head with his other hand. So when he comes, you're pivoting, stepping outside, and automatically covering the possibility of him spinning around with his elbow and collecting your arms with his arm. After you point him in this position, slice across the tendon of his arm and then back into his kidney. Then again, like I said before, he's pretty much done at the time. It, it is sort of overdoing it to then take the blade across the crease, taking him down into this position here and then stopping him from rolling over again with your blade into his spine. The close technique again, he comes to attack you, you intercept in this position. Even if he was so powerful that his force was coming through, you're still letting that come through, you're just redirecting it, going to this point again where you can control him from the possibility of him turning with your blade into his kidney. And then again, slice and then back into the kidney. This position, there's a number of things that you can do. Why I don't come then close? Because I cannot, I cannot stop this from happening. If I want to, like some people might think, okay, I'm going to come and control him with his neck. There's some, some things that you can do. I prefer not to be in front of this blade from the control that I have of his wrist at this point. That is one of the reasons why I would withdraw moving in a backwards manner, taking him to the ground from that point. Technique number four, as your opponent comes to stab you, move to the inside. But I'm moving to the inside on a reverse angle. Before on the other techniques, I was using a forward 45. Now I'm sort of doing a reverse 45 because I do not want to ever be on this side of this attacking arm with the blade holding in this position. There's not too much things that you can do here. You're going to get stabbed if anybody is proficient. So as he comes to stab you, you're jumping to the inside of his body using a reverse angle. At this position, you're collecting his wrist and redirecting it. If, if his energy is going this way, you loop that energy into a circle and then continue that circle coming back towards him. So there's a few things. If you can't do this, because some people can't because they're doing it wrongly, of course. If if I cannot turn his blade because his arm is stationary, it's not that I'm not weak. He has resistance. That resistance has to be broken with a little motion. Since his movement in the first place was coming this way, you allow that same movement to, to loop around that circle. Because if you just went to move out of the way and intercepted this hardly, there's no way that you're going to turn his wrist back into his body. His energy has to be taken this way. See what that does to the center of gravity? And as soon as it does this, it allows you to twist the wrist into this circle, coming into this position here. At the same time that you do that, you're coming to do this. You're never stabbing like this or pushing like this with my body like this. My body is coming in. My body is coming in to stab him, both with his blade and my own blade. So here again, as your opponent comes to get you, jump out of the way on a reverse angle, intercepting it. Now I don't have a grab, I didn't grab a hard hold of him. I just, it's sort of like a sticking technique coming through here. But before that, his energy ends, I have to then circle around in this position here, turning his blade in so I can get him. Again, a closer view, as your uh, opponent comes to attack you, step to the inside, reaching and sticking with his energy. Make sure that you're going with his energy, don't ever try to stop his energy because he will counter with his body. If you collected his energy and rotated it in this manner, it would allow you to attack him. Make sure that when you did intercept his 
his blade. So when he came, came to get you, that you're moving out of, the, out of the possibility of him striking you. Even if your hand was at this position, you'll, st you'll let it slide to this position before you come here. Your hand has to be over top of his hand. If you're in this position, you can't control his, his wrist. You have to have your hand that slid down to this crook here, the base of his wrist, and your hand over top, turning and twisting in this manner. Even if, what could happen to some people, if you didn't twist it well enough, his arm may be locked into his body. That's because you were too slow and you didn't go with the natural flow of things. But if it ever did happen, instead of pushing this way where he's based, you would push it upwards. Because his resistance is stopping you and he's locked into his body. If you understand where his energy is and where his where it's not, you'll be able to redirect that forward force into an upwards mo motion, striking him into the heart. Again, technique number four with the opposite hand, so you are now holding on to the blade with your left hand. As your opponent comes to stab you, move to his inside, letting the blade pass by, intercepting his hand, pretty much your thumb ends up at the crook of his wrist. In this position, the energy that went this way has to rotate around and your body will then attack. So you won't push this way and then attack this way. Your whole body will come simultaneously. Now one of, the, uh, one of the reasons why we do this is as he comes to attack, if I was to move on this side, I cannot defend against his blade coming here and coming to my neck. I do not ever want to move if somebody's holding on to the blade in this manner, I'll never want to move to the outside of this blade because if I do, even if I'm here, his blade can still turn past here, controlling my blade as he comes to stab me. I'm perfectly aware of this. You should be too, if you want to live in a knife fight. So again, as he comes to attack you, step to the inside but on a reverse angle, intercepting his hand, taking that same energy rotating around in a circle and having your whole body come forward, stabbing him into the abdomen with his blade and his throat with your blade. Again, from a closer perspective, he comes to stab you, move on a reverse angle, avoiding his blade. And as it comes past you, you always have this as a secondary, like you always keep this here, just in case. As it comes past you and you're in this position, redirecting the flow. It's just a matter of his energy is coming towards you. And as it comes towards you, you're just redirecting it, twisting the wrist in this position. The more you twist the wrist, the more it will break his center of gravity. And doing so allows you then to push even with the palm of your weapon, the palm of your hand into his weapon at the same time. So even if he didn't have a good grip of his own weapon, you'd still power in. So if you didn't, and you pushed in, and he let that blade slide out of his hand, he might not get stabbed as deep. Number five offensive knife technique. While your uh, attacker is attacking from a reverse grip, he will be attacking in a, an attack like this, on an angle coming down. This is a number five angle. So as he comes from a number five angle, you have to make sure that, then again that you step on a reverse direction, letting it pass by you, and then intercepting from this position here. Now, the energy that's coming here, do not go like this and make, try to make his energy come back towards you to turn around. Step with this energy coming in this position here, having your weapon, your blade, in front of his bicep. At this position, you're going to thrust his own point into his neck, slicing out his bicep, and then stabbing him in the kidneys. Again, from a closer view, as your opponent comes to attack you, move out of the way. It's like a water technique, or some people call a slingshot technique. It's like you're moving back to move forward. You're not moving back, stopping, then attacking. Your backward motion has to be connected to a forward motion. It's just that you're moving far enough out of the way and then rotating inside. 
So as he comes, you're moving out and then in. Again, you want to avoid the possibility of him striking with his hand or coming around you. You're taking this energy, again like I said earlier, do not bend his arm this way to come underneath it. Let you move out around in this position, having your blade in front of his bicep and his blade thrusting towards his own neck as you cut down his bicep and stab him in the kidney in a position that's like this. But we never use our arms coming away from our body. Our whole body actually drives through. So we're driving into the kidneys at this position. From here again, it doesn't matter. You can take him down. As he goes down, you can slice out the back of his legs, get him in the ribs. He's pretty much finished at this point in time. Our fifth offensive technique with the left hand now. As your opponent is striking down, you're moving out of the way in this position. Make sure that when you connect it, you're coming down in this position, pointing into his neck, slicing out his biceps, and stabbing him in his kidneys. Technique number five from the opposite side. So we are holding on to the blade now with our left hand. As your attacker is striking down, make sure that you're stepping out away from his strike. You're not stepping to the outside, you're more or less stepping behind in this position here. Intercepting his hand. At this point in time, before we went through this way, we also want to avoid that other hand. So make sure, sort of like we did a wrist roll to the abdomen before, you're going to take the energy that's coming forward and you're going to redirect it as your body steps out. So don't make your body step in front of him. Make sure your body is stepping out into this position here, coming with your blade against the back of his bicep. His blade is pointing his neck. You're thrusting his blade into his neck. You're slicing out his bicep and stabbing him in the kidneys. Then from this point, again, you can then, then take him down and as he falls down, you're slicing out the back of his leg. Make sure you step in tight behind his back so that he doesn't get to spin around and face you. At where it gives you the dominant position and control of your attacker. If I did not step in, right, my foot is pretty much underneath his side. My knee is right up against his back. If I didn't do that and he spins around, he's then turning the blade back towards me and I still will be killing him, but what if he gets me in the femoral artery and kills me? So there are certain things that you have to be aware of while knife fighting. From a, from a closer view, as your opponent comes to attack, you're stepping to his inside, but in a reverse manner, intercepting his arm in this position. Again, like I said earlier, it's hard to get these techniques because there's so many variations that affect his body and your body. Because if I went to this position, it would allow him to come around. So I got to make sure that if I go in this position, I have to turn. But I have to turn, but I don't want to walk inside of it here because I'm going to walk inside of the blade. I got to make sure that when I turn, I'm going to then step with a big circle around like this, having my blade against his bicep, turning his blade towards his neck. You see what happens here? His blade isn't pointing towards his neck, it's sort of pointing in that position. But if I twist his wrist, he actually assists by bringing his neck closer to the blade. And as he does that, I slice or point into his carotid artery or juggler, slicing down his bicep and then coming in a position here. So you're, don't turn your wrist in this manner, keep your wrist in this manner so that when you attack, you're locked into your own body and your attack is a lot stronger. Again, like I said earlier, you can take him down from this point, there's not too much you can do. If you're worried about his body coming around, you just step back into this position. Make sure that you throw your leg in there tight. Before I caught him with my leg underneath this back, this time I caught him in this position. You gotta catch him before he spins around. Because if he spins around, that blade's coming at you. And you gotta be aware of what can happen before it does. Our sixth offensive technique is our attacker is going to attack 
from a reverse grip on a number six slice. So as he does this, we're going to intercept the same energy that's coming towards us and we're going to redirect this position to pop his elbow. After we pop his elbow, we're going to turn in this position and we're going to slice our attacker with his own blade and our blade at the same time and then again we can finish our opponent off even further. During this number six movement, as your opponent is coming to attack you, make sure that you're stepping to his inside and as you're stepping to the inside you're actually catching his energy that's coming up because his energy is coming up to his last meet in this, in this manner. So as he comes to do that, I'm stepping to his inside on a reverse 45, turning his wrist in this position, collecting his elbow with my shoulder. As I pop his elbow, I then continue pivoting, pointing my lead leg around, stepping in this full circle like this pointing his own blade at his face or his neck and your blade, make sure that you point the blade towards him, you're slicing both out at the same time. As you slice out, you can do a multitude of things if you wanted to come across, slashing his side, pointing him to the abdomen, coming across to the leg, there's any manner of things that you can do to your opponent. If, depending on the circumstances, if you're in the heat of a battle and you don't want him coming up and killing you as his other buddies attacking you from behind. From a closer view, as your opponent is coming, you're intercepting, going with his energy, stepping in and popping his elbow. At this point, again, point your leg, turn around with a full circle, pointing your blade towards your opponent's neck. His blade is a point towards his neck slicing across his neck with both blades. At this point again, you can finish him off. You can come back with the kidneys, you can slash with the kidneys, you can point him in his abdomen, you can point him in his armpit, you can come down to the back of the leg, you can come lower. It doesn't really matter at this point in time because there's nothing he can do. Because he has to pretty much fall down from that grip. Again, number six with the other side, holding on with the opposite hand. As your opponent is coming to get you, you're stepping, remember you're stepping to his inside. Stepping to his inside, letting the flow of his energy come. Redirecting that flow of his energy and stepping in with your shoulder underneath his elbow. At this position, you are stepping, you turn this leg, in a pivoting motion like this, you step around with the other leg, putting your blade against his bicep, pointing the blade towards his neck and coming with both blades across his neck. Again, if you wanted to stab him this way or if you wanted to slice him this way and stab him that way or if you wanted to come down low, it's all good. It doesn't really matter because you would have been able to just Control him to the ground from this position and let him go if you want him to run, get away, or whatever the case may be. A closer view from the other side, as your opponent comes to attack you, step to his inside. It's not blocking, remember, you're going with his energy. As you're going with his energy, you're intercepting with your hand over top of his wrist so that you're turning his wrist into this position, stepping in underneath his elbow, standing up on his elbow, hyperextending his elbow. Turning your foot, stepping in a full circle around with your blade up against his bicep, facing his neck, and his blade facing his neck. You're going to take both blades across his neck. Again, you could slash him this way, or you could backstab him this way. You could, once you stab him this way, you could stab him under his armpit. You could have stabbed him under his, his leg. There's a multitude of things from here. Anything you're doing is just overkill because at this point in time the only thing that's keeping him up is you by not dropping this arm down in this position. Make sure that if you do drop his arm down where he's falling down that you can step your leg right underneath him to stop him from rolling around and covering himself and kicking you in the face because here he can. His blade is actually pointing to the back of his neck. 
I can do it pretty much have my way and carve them up. Number seven, offensive attack. Your attacker is coming with a reverse grip, coming on a downward angle in this manner. Because we have to be able to defend from attack from any angle at any time, whether they be pointing strikes or whether them to be slicing strikes. So as my opponent, I'm then again coming back to the regular grip. As my opponent comes to attack, I'm intercepting in this manner, moving underneath his arm to this position, redirecting his arm, twisting the blade to his back. At this point, I'm pushing the blade down, slicing under the back of his leg, and coming to stab my opponent in his abdomen. On this number seven technique, my opponent comes to attack. I'm stepping in. I'm stepping in to sort of block and guard his attack. I'm doing this, as this energy stops him, he's then going to want to come from this position. So I'm moving outside of that. I'm avoiding, and I'm stepping with my rear leg underneath his arm turning. So as he comes to attack, and I'm pivoting, my motion on defending it is I'm stepping in and guarding in this manner. Because I don't want to be ever to be on this side of his attacking arm unless I'm in control of it. Since I don't want to avoid, since I want to avoid him from attacking me in this position, I'm stepping outside of him in this manner, turning his blade in towards him. From this position, I'm thrusting down. I can either drop down, slicing the back of his leg, or just step around, stabbing my opponent in the abdomen. With a closer view, your opponent comes to attack, come inside, blocking and striking the arm, but don't stop to get hit by his other hand, stepping around in this position, turning his wrist so that the, his own blade faces the back of his leg. At this position, you can drop down, and as I drop down, I'm actually sla slicing, slashing the back of his forearm. So as I'm coming down this, I'm coming in this position across his leg, and then coming into his abdomen from this position. Number seven from the opposite side. So holding your blade in your left hand and your opponent also holding it in his left hand. As your opponent is coming to get you, step inside. From this position here, you're going to walk through from here, pointing the blade into the back of your opponent's leg with your other blade, slash it across his arm and stab him into his stomach. Again, as our opponent comes to attack you, you're stepping inside, guarding, blocking. You're then, it's not going to be two separate movement, movements. It's not like you're stepping inside and then moving. You're stepping inside should be moving through to avoid him from hitting with his other hand. So as he's coming, and you're stepping, you're actually stepping around into this position. With your wrist, you're pointing his blade towards his back. At this position, with your other blade, you're going to come to slash his wrist or forearm. And in this position, I'm going to now drop down as I slash, coming across the back of his legs, and then coming back up to his stomach. Offensive technique number eight, your attacker from a reverse grip has come in to stab you on a diagonal working upwards from the bottom left to the top right. You defending from a regular grip. As he comes to attack you, you're moving to his inside, stepping in a reverse direction. As, just as it passes you, you're going to then check inside, walking around in this position. So in walking around, when he comes to attack you, you're moving again to his inside but stepping out, making sure that you do not want to be in the fire of that blade. From this position, you're going to then cover yourself 
with your blade as you're walking in this manner. The blade now is pointing towards his side. Now I'm not right behind him, I'm off to the side. I thrust my blade into his side and what I'm doing that simultaneously is the back of my arm is going across his elbow and since his wrist is twisted, hyperextending his elbow already, putting him in a position to be taken down into an armbar. From this position, make sure that you're blocking with your leg or your knee or both to stop him from rolling out. This would be a mistake if he did, if you didn't, and he did manage to roll out, he's going to be turning that blade back in towards you. So you've got to make sure that you avoid that. One of the things that we can do to avoid that is, as he's coming for that number eight strike, and you're moving out of the way, intercepting, coming into this position, sticking it into his side, when you do go to take him down, keep dragging him out all the way to this position here, so that you can get his arm flat down. If his arm is flat down, you just rest your knee on top of his arm, pinning him, allowing you to stab your opponent into the kidneys, or you can slice open the back of his arm, and then again stab him into the neck. From a closer view, as your opponent is coming to get you, you're stepping to his inside, but on a reverse manner. So what I call the inside means towards the inside of your attacker, and when I say stepping to the outside again to refresh your memory, it's going to the outside of your attacker. You're moving to the inside, stepping with your rear leg backwards. As you step backwards, letting that pass by you, you're inter you don't intercept here because you will be stabbed. He will then control you and have his way with you. Make sure that you never get this grip because you will have no control. In, of, of your attacker. So when he does come, you're stepping out of the way and your hand is being over top of his hand with your thumb again curled underneath here. In this position, you didn't stop or hesitate. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes because as this passes by and I move back, cleft, I'm coming in this position, guarding the elbow the whole time, slicing or pointing my blade into his kidneys, keeping his arm torqued and my arm across his elbow taking the center of gravity off my opponent because it is an arm lock you do not want to pull him down in a manner going towards here because his back is going to curl back in towards it and make it easier for him to roll over so when you're going to take him down make sure that you take him down on a forward 45 in this manner because you can step him out this way and keep him dragged out. In this position again, you're kneeling down on his arm, giving yourself a position to finish your attacker. Number eight, holding on with your left hand now. As your opponent comes to attack you, move again on your reverse directional movement line to the inside of your opponent's body. So watching the movement again, you're in this position, you're stepping away, because the main thing is as he's coming, you're stepping away in this position. So as soon as he comes, you're stepping away, letting his blade pass by. As it's passing by, you're sort of going with that energy. It's a sticking technique. As you're sticking with that, you're coming in, so that motion, as this is coming, you're coming with it, coming inside in this manner here, pointing him out. Now, as you're pointing him out, you're making sure that you're getting his arm twisted, but your forearm is then pushing down in this manner. Now, make sure that you don't pull him back this way. You want to then again pull him in this manner here. This way will allow him to fall down with his back covering himself. As you push out here, you're going to apply, it's pretty much an arm bar that I'm just doing with my finger here. If you collect it on the elbow, the bone of the elbow, the joint, as the arm is twisted so that the blade's not facing you anymore, it's twisted downwards and you're pulling down in this position here. Again, you can see where I'm going to then take the back of his arm, his tricep, and 
kneel over top of it in this manner here where I can finish my attacker. From a closer view, your opponent comes to attack you. You're stepping to his inside but moving yourself away. Making sure that your step is a back and forth motion. It's never step, change your body weight and then come through. I'm only doing this again for demonstration purposes because when, when he comes, I'm stepping out and moving in in this manner here. Stabbing him and taking his arm straight out. From this position here, I'm going to step backwards. Then my foot is pretty much underneath his shoulder as I'm kneeling on this arm. I can break this arm fairly easy from here. It's already been twisted and cut. But I have total control of him and there's nowhere for him to go.